Hello, my name is Dr. Leslie Douglas and I am the laboratory manager at Biocomp Labs located in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today I will be discussing the Biocomp Labs Serum Biocompatibility Panel for Dental Materials. I will also discuss how to best understand, navigate, and utilize the information provided in the report. First, let's talk about serum biocompatibility of dental products. Simply put, biocompatibility is the study of how foreign materials interact with the human body. A dental product is considered foreign. A dental product will be considered biocompatible when it does not cause harm or trigger an adverse reaction. Is that even possible? The answer is no. All materials in one way or another in the body are considered foreign. The question is, how reactive can that material be? Information revealed through serum biocompatibility testing allows you and your dentist to learn about and avoid dental toxicity by utilizing the least reactive dental products possible. Our report has two parts. There are components and there are products. Components, of which there are 78, are common ingredients in dental materials. The product database, of which there are over 11,000 at this time, are individual dental products listed by product name, manufacturer, and are sorted by dental usage. So let's talk about the components. Again, we have 78 components, which are common ingredients found in dental materials. Both metals and non-metals are represented. Components that are commonly asked about are acrylamide, aluminum, cobalt, copper, mercury, stannous fluoride, titanium dioxide, and zirconia. The products in the report are sorted into 26 categories of dental usage, like composite material, bonding agents, cement, porcelain alloys, etc. If a product is recommended by the manufacturer for more than one usage, as in a bond and a cement, that product will be listed in both categories, but it's only counted as one product. The dental product database is massive. We have over 11,000 products, all sorted by the product name, the manufacturer of the product, and then categorized by dental usage. For example, on the left, we have a common composite line called Edmira, which is manufactured by Voco GmbH. There are seven products that are each individual products in the Edmira line. Each one has its own formulation and therefore is listed by the specific product name, and that gives us the seven component product line. In the middle, we have the Filtech composite line manufactured by 3M. And on the right, we have the all bond product line manufactured by Bisco. Each of the individual products is followed by a five digit number. This is corresponding to the Biocomp Labs internal numbering system of manufacturers. The numerical list of all manufacturers can be found at the end of the report. So if you're looking, let's say, for a specific composite by Admira in the Admira line made by Boco GmbH, and you find it, let's say, Admira Fusion Flow, if it's followed by a 10158, then that is, in fact, the product that you're looking for with the manufacturer that you're looking for. Some products are listed with the manufacturer name specifically because they have the same name of the product and different manufacturers. Okay, serum biocompatibility collection kits. The biocompatibility panel is based on a serum sample. We will send collection kits to practitioners at no charge on request. They come with everything that is needed for sample collection except for the needle. We can also help your clients find a phlebotomy laboratory that is convenient to their location. 
BioComp Labs recommends a 10-hour fast prior to sampling so the patient does not eat or drink anything they may have an inherent sensitivity to. Have the phlebotomist follow the collection and sample preparation instructions that are enclosed in each kit. The phlebotomist will draw two vials of blood, let it clot, spin it down, and separate off the serum. The serum is collected into the smaller white cap tube, and we need at least three cc's of serum to run the panel. Packaging and shipping. Read the instructions. Freeze the sample until you are ready to ship. Only ship on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday because we don't want the sample sitting at UPS over a weekend. The prepaid UPS return label to return your sample to our laboratory does not include a scheduled pickup. You can give your package sample to your typical UPS carrier or find a convenient UPS drop-off location at ups.com. All right, overall reactivities. The patient's overall reactivities to the 78 individual components that we already spoke about are listed on page one of the report. Each component will be determined to be least, moderate, or highly reactive to the patient's sample. Notice, there is no category for non-reactive as every material utilized is considered foreign and therefore may have an impact on the patient and their health. These reactivities are used to determine the reactivity level of each product in the database. For example, this sample patient was determined to be highly reactive to copper. Based on this finding, any product in the database, no matter what it's used for, any product that contains copper will be determined to be highly reactive to this patient. Report findings. This is a sampling for findings of temporary materials. You can see that there are three sections, least, moderate, and highly reactive. Each product is individually listed within each reactivity level, each followed by the five digit number. Based on this result, it would not be appropriate to utilize Cabot or Cabot G temporary materials made by 3M for this patient. But as you can see, there are many options that were found to be least reactive for this patient to choose from. All right, a very highly specialized category in our report is called products various omitting aluminum considerations. Here, the products are not sorted by dental usage. Rather, products in this category have one thing in common, and that commonality is that all of these products contain some form of bound aluminum. Metallic aluminum is generally considered highly reactive and use of products which contain metallic aluminum typically fall into the higher reactive category. However, these products contained some sort of bound aluminum, which means that the aluminum atoms are chemically bound typically by oxygen or silicate to yield aluminum oxide, aluminum silicate, or alumina. These products are typically found in porcelains and ceramics, but also in um, tissue management products as well. If a product is found in this category, it is listed nowhere else in the report. If a product is found to be moderate or highly reactive, it is due to some other reactivity level of those original 78 components. It is at the practitioner discretion to decide to use products containing bound aluminum in their practice or not. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Leslie Douglas. Laboratory Manager of Biocomp Labs, and if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to call.